you know, every culture that's existed for a long time on this planet has a, a grappling art. Every warrior culture, pretty much every culture that survived has a warrior culture, right? So if we're talking about Vikings, Mongolians, Europeans, every place you go, they have some form of grappling. And in most of those, beside the takedowns, which are, which are all you know, hip throws and foot sweeps and things like that, there's a rule where if you can keep both shoulders pinned for some specific amount of time, certain amount of seconds or whatever, you win. Which, if you don't understand grappling, may seem kind of arbitrary. Why do I have to keep the shoulders pinned? Why don't we pin the hips or some other point? But once you start to realize that keeping both shoulders pinned keeps him completely glued to the mat, you realize how important that piece of the puzzle is as far as holding them down, then that rule makes more sense. And you'll see why that rule was pretty much worldwide. So Ray's shoulders are here. That's where I want my spine. So you'll see uh, Coach Henry Aikens will talk about the line of the shoulders, which is a very good description for it, and lining up your spine here. Uh, Coach Howder, who was here a few weeks ago, his phrase for, for it was laying on the neck. But that's also exactly what we're doing. And in the beginning, you'll see students will resist this and they'll, they'll start to go back down here because this feels too high. And when I ask them, why does it feel too high? I, I actually heard a, a couple of them say, well, I feel like I'm sitting on their neck and not on their body. But that's the point, right? You want your weight right here. So now watch the difference. My spine lined up with his shoulders. And really it feels more like I'm sitting on Coach Ray's neck than his body. But here's the difference. Now go to turn towards me. Good, go back. Line my spine up with the line of the shoulders, turn towards me. All right. I haven't done anything different with my legs. I'm not pushing, I'm not driving. We're gonna do that in a second, but just that adjustment makes a huge difference. So every time we're playing cross sides, and you'll see this as we get into the other positions, if I'm facing the legs, if I'm facing the head, the weight now is probably gonna be higher than you're normally used to, but that's good. And we wanna learn how to escape when somebody's weight is up here because it's gonna be all that much easier when they're holding their weight down here. If he just continues that angle, he'll turn me over. Now, we adjust just slightly. And instead of one o'clock, we're gonna be more two-ish, three o'clock. So this direction here, which is, by the way, where most people do the upa, because you think you're gonna roll them, they look this way, they panic, they look there. And where your eyeballs go is where they go. Now try and roll me. There's no way. He can try as hard as he wants. He's rolling into my post, right? This is the case with all, almost all the turnovers. So the ones I'm going to show you now are the exact same thing, but the other, going the other way, towards the feet, okay? So Coach Ray's on top, in, underhook, sit out. I'm defending the inside space. I'm defending my shoulders, that real estate, keeping my, um, his weight down. I'm maintaining good base and posture. My foot's going out. I'm always just, as I move my foot out, just slightly lifting my hip and lifting my shoulder and connecting here. You feel the difference between this and this? It's subtle, but I have much more control over your base here. Now I'm gonna frame with my left hand, and I've, there's different ways to do this. A lot of times people teach it like this with gi, that's fine. If I'm extending my arm, I'm going thumb down, so I'm grabbing this lapel and going here. Uh, I've seen Hickson teach it like this on the face. That's, that's great. I have for years taught it on the shoulder because that's where I like to go to stop the punches. They're all good. So here, 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 it doesn't matter. Now here's the important part is the angle. Remember I said it's right off six o'clock. So if I'm going with my left hand, the angle is gonna be where my right foot is now. Not where my right foot is going, but where it is now. So see my foot. I'm gonna throw my legs out of the way and put him right there. And it won't matter if I ask Ray to take this hand and put it behind him to post. It won't matter, just like it didn't matter with that upa, if the angle's correct. So I'm gonna go right here to my right foot. See, he still goes right over. If I change it, so I try and go here. Yep. Or I try and go there. Yep. Angle correct, left hand or right foot, right on top. So that's the first one. That's the one you're gonna see most often. It's all predicated on me controlling that space and having the inside first. Okay, now we have the, the upa right, 
Once you have the upper right, it's everywhere. And here's one thing I want you to understand. <clears throat> as long as he has one knee on the mat, you can upa. I can upa when he's at side mount. I can upa when his head's down. I can upa when his head's up. Even if he doesn't give me an arm, I can upa. So there's always an upa. If two knees are on the mat, there's an upa. Okay, so we're gonna go now. We'll go cross face underhook race here. And I'm gonna show you one I've been doing forever. I've been doing this one for forever. It's kind of sneaky, but we're here and I'm defending mount the way I showed you, surviving, but I mess up and he gets his knee across my body and he mounts me. And as soon as he mounts me, I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna oopa and take him back where he was. And he's usually, they're very vulnerable to go back right where they were. And he's already trapped his arm because that's a cross face. So really all I have to trap is the foot. So we'll do a slow motion watch. I'm defending, but like I showed you before on the arm lock, I wanna give up, I wanna be early to the next objective rather than holding on too long to the second. So if he starts to mount and I'm like, oh shit, he's mounting me and then I get frustrated, that doesn't help, go back. He starts to mount, I'm gonna be early to my next objective. So as he mounts me, all I'm looking to do, keep going, is trap that foot, come back. I'm ready. I know he's gonna mount. It's too late for me now. He's got my, his knee on my belly. So I'm just ready. And as soon as I step there, I shorten the side. My knee goes down, right? His arm's trapped. Are you gonna stop me from rolling you here? No way. And then I can roll him back where he came from. Okay, now we're gonna talk about the power shrimp. Power shrimp is one of the most important, I think, escape movements in jujitsu and these days, pretty much any time I teach pulling guard or most escapes, I'll start the students by doing rounds of power shrimp. The mechanics of it are very simple. So mechanically, what Travis is gonna do is, if we go back to our tree metaphor, base, posture, connection, pressure. So first thing with base is almost always leg first. You step in your leg out to establish your base. So he's gonna step out with the back leg, okay? Then he's going to push off from the foot into the knee, into the hip, into the shoulder. He'll be up high on this shoulder. And then while his hips are in the air, shrimp backwards, and this foot will come underneath that one. Okay, so up, hips high, and then out. Hips back, yeah. And you don't have to thread the needle per se. You can just shrimp straight back. And when you shrimp straight back, this will just kind of go straight and relaxed. So up and out. Very nice. One more time. And you wanna make sure if you've not done this before, or even if you have and you're not doing it perfectly, just do it a few times and coordinate your body so that you have it in the right order, right? Step, lift, and then out. I see students sometimes don't step, or they don't step firmly enough, yeah, and then it won't work quite as well, or they won't lift the hips up. So they'll just try and step and shrimp, and then you don't get enough space because the person's weight's not up uh, to be able to move your hips out. So step, lift, and then out. Okay, so that's simple enough. The real key here, and the, the reason why we're drilling this is the connection piece, okay? So now I want you to watch something here. I'm gonna pin Coach Travis's shoulder, so I'm gonna put my hands on his top shoulder, which after all is what we're trying to control when we wanna really keep somebody pinned. And I'm gonna have him intentionally do this incorrectly and try to step, lift his hips, and get out. Go ahead, go. You're gonna have to try a little harder. Start again, start again, start again. Start from scratch, on my count, ready? Now I'm not really, put, I'm leaning all my 271 pounds into him. Okay, ready, go. Good, now go back. Now I'm gonna ask him to do it correctly, okay? And you see if you can notice any visible difference. Do it correctly. And you're gonna see me lift up a little bit because if I don't, he is gonna hurt my wrist because he has so much power there. Which, by the way, is why I'm gonna bring somebody else in. Come here, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Pin his shoulders, and I'm gonna ask Travis to do it correctly. Good, do it again. Lift those hips up a little higher. And when you step, you go. Step and go. Yes, very nice. Now go back incorrectly. That's it, good. So let me trade spots. The key here 
is connection. And people don't realize what a massive difference it makes and how much of your energy from the ground up gets lost when you don't connect, right? So Coach Ray pins my shoulder. Yeah, you gotta trust this. Once you start doing it, you realize it works. You need to trust it. And I time my movement off my step. So you're gonna see me go as I step. So I connect. And I'm getting my shoulder up. I connect. Getting my shoulder out. 